So a few days ago we scanned some Ilford HP5 and 35mm using the Fuji X-T3 and I made an entire video breaking down the whole process and all of the equipment that I use so if you haven't seen that yet you should probably watch that before this video. So I'm going to put a card at the top of the screen and I'll link it down below as well. So to change up this video we're going to be looking only at medium format film and every photo is color negative film. That way you guys can see how Negative Lab Pro handles color negative film and different film stocks. After we finish that up, I'm going to address some of the questions and comments that I got on the last video. So if you'd like to see sort of a follow-up video and a Q&A kind of thing, definitely stick around till the end of the video. But until then, let's get started. Okay, so I have four different photos here. They're different film stocks. And uh, the first one here is Ektar 100. This is a photo I shot back in 2012 with my RB67. First thing you want to do is set your white balance off of the film itself, not the image. This is going to get us to a good starting point. And then what's recommended is to crop out everything outside of the image. I haven't had any issues with black and white film by leaving some of the border in first, but it's recommended from Negative Lab Pro that you actually crop out everything for color negative film so that way the plugin isn't tricked by any information outside it's only going to be analyzing the photo itself so after you've done this you want to hit control n that's going to bring up negative lab pro from lightroom and then you can choose your color model based on different uh, film scanners so you can just do the basic one or you can choose frontier or noritsu which are based off of the two you know pro level film scanners i tend to get my film scanned on a noritsu so i usually start with that We'll hit convert negative and now the plugin is going to do its work here. This is all in real time and there you go. So this is our starting point and obviously with the tones you can make your own adjustments. You can see this was left from my previous one so if I hit reset now everything is zeroed out. Uh, one option you can do is hit auto color and this is basically going to kind of analyze the film itself and just do you know its own adjustment so you can see you know turning that on and off it definitely notices the sort of green and cyan tone in here hit auto color it adds some magenta back in to kind of balance that out I personally like to do this kind of work myself so I'll just leave that off but if you want to just kind of speed things up and just let it do it you can also do that. Same with auto density it'll kind of add the contrast and kind of get everything to where it thinks it should be but again I do all this manually but you can do it however you'd like. Um, the lights I'll probably bring that down just a tiny tiny bit because you know this is a white bridge and it's in direct sunlight so it is going to be bright but I don't want this to be too bright so just bring it down negative to nothing crazy and uh, for the color adjustments you can actually adjust everything here for the mids highs and shadows so you can really fine-tune things I personally think that I like to do most of my adjustment in the tint and white balance afterwards um, you know we set our white balance at the start but for me that's just to kind of get it at a good starting point um, but if you do want to adjust things in here, you have the room to do so. So for shadows, you know, maybe the reds, maybe it's too red and I want to add some cyan to it, or maybe it's too cyan and I want to add some red. So you can see the adjustments it's making, especially back here, you know, where the shadows actually are. Uh, for the highs, you know, it's a lot more of the highlight areas. So for me, maybe they're a little bit too blue. You can add some yellow back in, but you know, it's it's easy to overdo it with stuff like this. So uh, I usually just leave this stuff where it's at, hit apply, and then I'll go into the temperature and tint and actually adjust things there. But one thing to keep in mind is you're working with a negative that's been inverted. So all of your adjustments here are now also inverted. So you'll notice if I take the temperature way to the left, it's going to warm things up and vice versa if I go to the right. So uh, we want to go right back to where it was and I would warm this up just a little bit. So I'm going to hold option just to kind of work in, you know, smaller increments. And I'm going to warm this up by dropping the temperature down again, just you know the inversion there because it's a negative to probably about right there that looks better than it was hit undo just to see the uh, before and after there you go you can kind of see it's a subtle adjustment but it definitely looks better and I would probably maybe take a little bit of magenta out of this not too much so adjust the tint to the right right there that looks better 
You can do a quick before and after to look at the negative, but again, all of this is really personal preference because it's really up to you what the final result looks like, but it's a really good, uh, you know, really good way to get a good starting point once you just use Negative Lab Pro. Next photo here, this is actually Fuji 400H. I shot this uh, in 2012 as well with my Hasselblad that I had at the time. And uh, I used that camera for just about everything for probably about a year and a half. That was like my daily carry kind of camera, which uh, was a bit much at times, but I love it. So uh, we're gonna set our white balance right there. Gonna go into a one-to-one -one crop since we're shooting a six by six. And I'm just gonna bring it just inside where the image is there we go so now we'll go to control n once again uh there we go go to naritsu convert negative and let's see where it takes us he was right in front of this really red wall and i uh, had this red jacket on and that's why i put him there and uh for this photo here let's see we can adjust the lights um looks like for some reason that's weird uh i don't know why but the lights was down to like negative eight, I think, at the start, um, which actually I feel like that looks good. So I don't know why I did that. But anyway, we're going to go with it uh, because the lights, if I didn't, were a little bit too light for me. I like having uh, all the skin detail in there. So it looks good, but the skin tone definitely doesn't look correct. It doesn't look right in terms of like warmth. It has this sort of green cast in the hair. Um, I definitely want to get rid of that. So if we bring, let's see, try and add in a little bit of magenta to the shadows. You can see the adjustment there in the hair. It's pretty subtle since there's not a whole lot of shadows there, but that definitely helps. Um, let's try and bring some red in there as well to get rid of some of that cyan cast. That's getting closer. Um, if we bring the mids and kind of warm it up just a little bit. I'm not really liking how that's looking. That's a little too much. Maybe one. I would say what I'm going to do is start there. Let's just see what auto color does. Nope. <laughs> Definitely don't like that. Auto density. Nope. Okay, I'm going to leave both of those off. We're going to hit apply. And what I'm going to do is jump into the temperature and tint. So now to warm it up. Yeah, this is getting much better now. Okay. I would say right about there for the temperature for the skin tones and now the tint this is where we can really see big differences um, I would personally take a little bit of green out of that so I'm gonna add whoops <laughs> I'm inverting again so I keep forgetting uh, let's see maybe take a little bit out there do a quick before and after I'm actually gonna warm that up just a little bit more I think right about there now you'll notice with the exposure as i go down it's getting brighter and you know vice versa but i would probably bring it to right about there and then i'd probably straighten it out just a little bit because i shot it just a little bit off i think there we go that's better and i'm i just it's tough to to get that white balance just right with all this red around but knowing what uh, this is my friend Drew. Knowing what his skin tone and stuff is like in person, it definitely helps to know that. But let's see, bring that down just a little bit. Okay, I think that is where I want it. So that one takes a little bit more, and that could be the Fuji 400H. It could be, you know, just the image itself with all this red. Um, could be how I shot it, but basically, uh, you know, some of these, this image here was pretty quick. This one took a little bit more work, but it's going to vary going from, you know, negative to negative and how you shot the negative itself, how you scanned it itself. So there's a lot of variables in there, but once you, you know, kind of jump in and start working with it, you can kind of just get a feel for it and uh, speed things up a little bit. Now this next one here, this is a photo of a woman I shot in 2012 uh, with my Hasselblad again. Uh, but this is actually shot on Ektar as well. And this woman, she uh, was running the miniature golf. Uh, I believe it's called Hillbilly Golf in Gatlinburg. This was a trip my dad and I took. We used to go to Gatlinburg together every year, just the two of us. And uh, it was always a lot of fun. That's one of our favorite places. And uh, one morning we went there to play some golf. 
And uh, this woman was working. She was just out on her smoke break, and we stopped and talked to her for a little bit. And as she was talking and telling a story, smoking her cigarette, I uh, just kind of pulled my camera up and uh, shot a quick photo of her. And uh, yeah, I've always liked it just because uh, she was super sweet, as most people are down there. Uh, so we go ahead, Naritsu, do the initial conversion, and there you go. Uh, we can do the auto color and auto, auto density. Um, I actually think auto color, uh, yeah, actually, <laughs> both of these look really, really good right off the bat on this one. Um, I think I'm going to leave both of those on for a change. And uh, yeah. Okay, I'm just going to go with that. And now if I want to warm it up, it was early in the morning and uh, it was an overcast day. So I don't want to warm it up too much, but I actually kind of like the way that looks right there. Maybe a bit too green. I'll pull a little bit of green out. I would say right there. And then if I want to make some individual adjustments, again, the highlights, you're not really working with the highlights. You're working with the shadows because, you know, it's a negative. Um, right there and actually maybe i'll warm it up just a little bit more a little less yeah right there cool so that one there is done um looks really good nice and sharp sweet i really like that one next up this photo is actually a more recent photo i shot this last year with a hasselblad and uh, this is a photo of molly and nora our daughter so we shot this indoors. This is Portra 160, and actually, just a quick shout out, this film, uh, this roll of film was given to me by my friend Timothy Ditzler from Timothy Makeups. So, Tim, thanks again for the film, man. Uh, and this is, again, Portra 160, shot indoors with a, uh, a big white, or a big uh, uh, sliding glass door behind me. So there was a lot of natural light coming in here, but it is indoors. So Naritsu, invert here. And there we go. Now if we do auto color, auto density, there you go. The auto density, it knows this is a pretty bright negative. I think I overexposed it, maybe a stop. And uh, so it's a pretty dense negative, but we'll bring that down ourselves. Uh, auto color, I'd probably leave auto color on here. It has a bit of a green kind of tint right off the start. Hitting auto color, it kind of adds some magenta in there, and that definitely helps out. So I'm going to bring the brightness down just a little bit mainly the skin tones that's really what i want to make sure i'm not you know blowing out or anything the darks i can maybe lighten them up just a tiny bit right there that seems like a good starting point it still has a little bit of a green cast to it so i'm going to try and fix that here so i want to warm it up some to about right there that's looking better um let's see here yeah leave that where it's at Skin tones are pretty good, and again, this is Portra 160, so they're going to be a little bit different than uh, the previous examples, but I actually think that looks pretty good right there. We can kind of go back and forth. Sometimes what I like to do on these kind of sliders is really, uh, one, holding option down, so that way you're working in smaller increments, but uh, just kind of going back and forth and getting a feel for it. Again, so much of this is personal preference and just feeling it out, but bring the brightness down just a tiny bit maybe. I think right there, right there is probably where I would leave this one. It's a nice, neutral, flat kind of look. Again, we were indoors with natural light coming in. And uh, if anything, I would maybe warm it up some. But that's, see, that is already, it's just, uh, you know, 50 points on temperature, which is a really small adjustment in the grand scheme of things. But it definitely makes a big difference. So I'd probably go down just a tiny bit right there. I think that one right there looks good. So again, uh, we've got Portra 160, Ektar 100, Fuji 400H, and Ektar 100 again. And you know, honestly, as I'm flipping through these, now this one seems a little too yellow, a little too green. So I'm going to cool that down just a little bit right there. And that looks better. So it's interesting how when you're, you know, doing these color corrections and going back and forth, sometimes your, you know, taste or your eye can change. It's always good to kind of give things a second look. Hopefully that was helpful just to kind of show you guys in real time just a few different examples.
I really hope this was helpful because I've gotten so many questions. That video that I put out a few days ago really took off a lot more than I thought it would. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, I do want to answer a couple of questions just because I got so many. The first thing, I do not have a link to the copy stand that I'm using. I've had so many people message me about that because I left that link out in the description. That's because I purchased this used on eBay. So unfortunately, I don't have the copy stand link. Um, I just found it used on eBay. But if you look, I'm sure you can find something. I wish there was like a name or model number I could share, but there is no branding at all on this copy stand so unfortunately I'm not much help there but just do some googling search on eBay look on Craigslist I'm sure you'll be able to find something there another thing a couple of people asked about was color science with different cameras and how that's going to affect your film scans um, this is something that I think is worth addressing but at the same time I don't think it's as big of an issue as people might think because with different cameras and different sensors, they're going to read certain colors differently. So as you take the same photo of a negative with different cameras, you're probably going to end up with a little bit of a different starting point. But I don't think it's going to be that big of a difference that's ultimately going to change you know, how good your results are. I think using the camera, especially shooting in RAW, the RAW format gives you so much flexibility. The fact that you're getting a good starting point is great, but you're really going to be adjusting things and, you know, fine tuning everything to get the final result that you want. So if you're going to start with, you know, just a flat raw file and you're going to adjust it to your liking, I don't really think there's as much of a, a big deal about where your starting point is because you're going to end up where you end up. You're going to end up where you want the photo to be. And I don't think, you know, where that image starts is really that big of a deal. And on top of that, I don't think the differences are going to be as serious as people think. Um, there's a lot of talk about, you know, uh, different color science from different cameras. And, you know, that is a thing. You know, different cameras are going to read things differently. But it's really not as drastic as you think, unless you're shooting like JPEGs. You know, if you're shooting JPEGs, that's going to be a different story because you are going to have, you know, less room there. But if you're using a RAW format, I don't think it's going to matter as much as some people might think. I also had a couple people asking about why Negative Lab Pro if you're just going to invert it because you can easily just invert the photo with a tone curve adjustment and you can absolutely do that. And for black and white, I think it works great. For color negative film, not so much. There's a lot more involved there. And I think that's where Negative Lab Pro is really beneficial, is using it for color negative film. But for black and white film, if that's all you're shooting, I don't necessarily think that it's really as big of a game changer because you can just, you know, do it the regular way, inverting the tone curve. But I tend to use it just because I've gotten so used to the workflow now and gotten so used to using it that it just seems to kind of get me at a better starting point and I don't really have to do as much. But again, if you're only shooting black and white, maybe not so much. I also had a comment asking if you're going to shoot film only to take a photo of it with your digital camera, then why are you even shooting film? And I'm going to address that in a separate video later on, so stick around for that. In the meantime, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys for watching and, you know, leaving comments and giving suggestions and asking questions. I really appreciate it, and I like to do more stuff like this where it's directly answering questions and, you know, directing or directly addressing topics that you guys are leaving. So thank you for that. If you guys have any questions about this, though, be sure to leave those in the comments. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.